We are moms who are pouring ourselves into our children every hour of every day. We are grandmothers who are also playing the role of primary caretaker. We are moms who are waiting to have children and trying our best to see the struggle through the eyes of God. We are moms who are learning the challenges of a blended family. We are moms in the workplace who are trying our best to balance competing expectations and demands. We are moms with adult children who are leaving our homes to pursue their own dreams. For packing lunches late at night, for cleaning out their backpacks, then filling them again, for offering gentle guidance to your own grown children, for becoming taxi drivers and appointment schedulers, for making sure the right baby doll is in their arms before they go to sleep, for helping them pay back their student loans, for cleaning and sterilizing and cooking, for doing their laundry and his laundry and our laundry, for praying and loving and forgiving, and falling down and rising to your feet again. For the mom who is overworked and exhausted. For the mom who seems to spend a million hours on a million little things. For the mom who pours Jesus into her family as best she can. And God himself not only celebrates what you do, but rejoices over the uniqueness of who you are. You are seen and you are loved without limits. Welcome to Mother's Day.
Well, good morning and welcome to Freedom Road Bible Church on this Mother's Day 
2020. This morning, in honor of Mother's Day, I'm going to ask for you to take your Bible with me and turn to the book of 2 John. The book of 2 John, it's a relatively short letter, and it's uh, compared to all of the rest of the New Testament, it's, it's really short. It's 13 verses, the entire book, and it's written, it's just long enough to be the length for a personal letter. And indeed, that's exactly what it is. It's written by John the Elder, as he calls himself. It's a title of respect and honor, but it's written to the elect lady and her children. And we'll see this all together. John himself here kind of writes and, 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 and talks about this, this lady and talks about some, uh, some amazing application to this woman's life. But it's, it's her life as a mom. Now, as we read this passage, there's, there's kind of two possibilities, and I can remember studying through it. <clears throat> two possibilities were, were kind of presented. First, it's actually a woman and her children. But second, it's symbolic of the church and all of the members. So this morning, the amazing thing is this. God's word always is applicable to all of us, to every one of us. Now, arguments are both ways, whether this was an actual woman, whether it was the church. And for our message time this morning, for our time in worship this morning, we're going to read it as a letter that's written to a mom. Now, it's not his mom, but it's a mom. She's in a different city. She has children. And these are all people that are in the faith. Now, this morning, we're going to be especially speaking to moms that have children at home. Now, that may not be you at all. Maybe that that's not you. Maybe you're not even a mom today. Maybe, um, you know, you're, you're, you're a guy or maybe you're a woman who's never had children or, or maybe you're not in that position at all. But listen, before you shut the video off, before you, you go and do something else, before you kind of tune everything else that I say um, um, out, listen, stop. Stop and stay, stay right there. Whether or, or not you have children, whether they're grown, whatever it is, listen, God will apply his word to your life today if you will let him if you will allow him to. Because today we're going to look at the responsibilities of a faithful mom. But these are responsibilities for every faithful believer. So as you have your Bible, the book of 2 John, let's begin reading, starting in verse number 1. The scripture says this, The elder unto the elect lady and her children, whom I love in the truth, and not I only, but also all they that have known the truth, for the truth's sake, which dwelleth in us, and shall be with us forever. Grace be with you, mercy and peace, from God the Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of the Father, in truth and love. I rejoiced greatly that I found of thy children walking in truth, as we have received a commandment from the Father. And now I beseech thee, lady, not as though I wrote a new commandment unto thee, but that which we had from the beginning, that we love one another. And this is love, that we walk after his commandments. This is the commandment, that as ye have heard from the beginning, you should walk in it. For many deceivers are entered into the world who confess not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. This is a deceiver and an antichrist. Look to yourselves that we lose not those things which we have wrought, but that we receive a full reward. Whosoever transgresseth and abideth not in the doctrine of Christ hath not God. He that abideth in the doctrine of Christ, he hath both the Father and the Son. If there come any unto you and bring not this doctrine, receive him not into your house, neither bid him God's speed. For he that biddeth him God's speed is partaker of his evil deeds. Having many things to write unto you, I would not write with paper and ink, but I trust to come unto you and speak face to face, that our joy may be full. The children of thy elect sister greet thee. Amen. Would you pray with me, please, this morning? Heavenly Father, as we come to you today, Lord, I thank you for moms. I thank you for the gift of moms, moms that have given of themselves, that have, have chosen life, that have chosen, Lord, not the easy path, but Lord, the path oftentimes that is most difficult, the path oftentimes that uh, the, the, the reward isn't always worth all that's put in, at least from an earthly standpoint, most times. It's hard work. But Father, 
In, in these ladies, in these moms, we thank you for the steadfastness. We thank you for the love. We thank you for the truth. And this morning, I pray, God, no matter what our background is, no matter what our experience with our moms, whether we ourselves are moms or not, but God, I pray this morning that you will speak to us, that you will speak to us, and that you will change us as we obey you. We thank you, Lord, and we pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Moms, this morning, I want to thank you for the, the awesome privilege that you have, have taken upon yourselves, but the responsibility also that's been given to you by God. Listen, to raise your children in the Lord. That's a real responsibility that God has given to you. Second John gives us some wonderful insight and, and some wonderful instructions uh, in, in this regard. He concentrates on, on twin themes of truth and love. And he talks about them and how they work together and loving one another and, and loving God by living in the truth. They are interrelated. And so as we see the context of, of this book, we know that there were false teachers going around and they were kind of traveling from town to town and from door to door. And they would, they would come and they would say that, look, Jesus isn't the Messiah. He hasn't come in the flesh and he, he had no fleshly nature. He didn't have... Uh, um, you know, the, the, the fact that he wasn't fully man and, and fully God. And they were spreading lies. They were spreading falsehoods. And so John's really concerned here. He's really concerned about love that lives the truth. How often today in our world do we see people saying that they love one another, but they, they put up with lies and, and they, they put forth lies and they live in lies. Friends, that's not love. See, see love lives the truth. And so John here, he lays out some responsibilities for any Christian mom who truly wants to raise her children for the Lord Jesus Christ. If that's the desire of your heart. And again, if you're here this morning, you have grown children, hold that thought. God's not done with you yet. But if that's the desire of your heart, there are three things. A Christian mother must know the truth. A Christian mother must live the truth. And a Christian mother must protect the truth. And so let's look at these three in turn this morning. Three responsibilities of a Christian mom. Number one, verses one to three tell us that a Christian mom must know the truth. See, Christian moms need to know the truth. The very first step in raising our children in Christ, in raising our children to love Christ, and raising our children to know the truth is the fact that moms, you know the truth first. You can't share something that you don't have. It's an impossibility. You can't raise your children to, to bless the Lord. You can't raise your children for Christ unless you know Christ, unless you are in Christ. And there's no question that the lady that John wrote to in our text this morning, the book of 2 John, is a believer. John calls her the elect lady. Now, this word elect or chosen uh, in Scripture always talks about believers, to those people who have called out to the Lord Jesus Christ, admitted that we're sinners, admitted uh, that, that we need a Savior, and recognized that Jesus Christ, God in the flesh, died for our sin, and that we trust him for our salvation, not ourselves. We trust him. So this lady did that. Jesus uses this very word, elect or chosen. He uses it um, 10 times in the Gospels to refer to always those that are saved. Now, notice that John says that he loves this elect woman and he loves her in the truth. And not only does he love her in the truth, but so does everybody who knows the truth. See, here's a, a cool thing. In other words, there's a bond between believers and, and it, it is a God-given bond given to believers for all that know the truth. It, it, as we experience the truth, as we come to the Lord Jesus Christ and we experience him and his truth, the truth of God, who he is, what he's done for us, his love for us, his mercy, his, his grace for us, and we see his salvation in our lives, we recognize it, we know the truth. And so when we see someone else who has trusted the Lord Jesus Christ, who is living for him, knows and shares and believes the same things that, that we do, and there is a love that is born there. And verse 2 says this, For the truth's sake which dwelleth in us and shall be with us forever. You see, truth for us as believers, as Christians, is far more than just a set of teachings. It's not a set of do's and don'ts. It is not a rule book. See, the person of Jesus Christ living in us 
His Holy Spirit living in us. He is the truth. He is the truth. Jesus Christ, who promised that he would be with us forever. Jesus Christ, who himself is the way, the truth, and the life. So let me ask you this morning. Do you know the truth? Do you know him? And I mean deep down in your heart, in the recesses of your heart, in that place that exists that only you and God know about. I'm not talking about a place where other people may look at you and agree, okay, that, that, that's fine. It's not about agreement. Listen, the love that comes is from a real relationship with Christ. I'm talking about a time in your life that you can point to where you recognized your sin and you recognized that you weren't enough and you recognized that you couldn't do enough to be to God and to be to where he was and to his standard. But you realize that Jesus was all of that and he did all of that. And that you trust him as your savior. Have you experienced the forgiveness of God through Jesus Christ? If not, why not? Why not come to Christ today? Why not admit your sin? Why not confess him as Savior? Why not be saved today? See, because when we trust Jesus Christ as our Savior, there's something that we get. Look at verse 3 with me. It says this, grace be with you. Mercy and peace from God the Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of the Father, in truth and love. God's grace, God's mercy, God's peace will flood your life as you place your life in Christ's hands, as you trust him. Now, of course, this is true of all believers. This is true of all who trust Christ. But this morning, specifically moms, moms, listen, don't miss the application here. Please don't miss it. You can't begin teaching your child the truth of Jesus Christ if you don't know him yourself. Knowing the truth means knowing Jesus. You must know the truth. Second, you must live the truth. Verses four to six kind of show us this. And this is the second essential after knowing the truth is to live the truth. John talks here about living the truth, or he, he uses the phrase walking in the truth through these verses. And listen, there is no greater joy for any Christian parent than to know that your children are walking in the truth. No greater joy. It is the absolute pinnacle of joy to know as a Christian parent that your kids are walking in the truth. And walking in the truth means putting the truth into practice in your life. In other words, living it. It means living out what you say or you claim to believe, putting it into practice in your life. And look, like all parents, I have hopes for my children. I have hopes for them. I, I, I hope to see them grow up and to, and to mature, to be contributing adults to society. I hope that they'll enjoy good health in their lives, that they'll gain knowledge and, and skills that will help them in life. I hope that they'll get an education and they'll, they'll find someone that they love and who loves them. But listen, I want to tell you something this morning. Not one of these things means anything. It doesn't mean a flip if my children don't know the truth and live the truth. Moms, pray for your kids. Pray for them. Pray that they serve Jesus Christ with all of their their mind, their heart, their strength. Pray that they follow after Jesus all the days of their life. Listen, moms, pray for your children. You, your kids are not going to automatically walk in the truth. Listen, you need prayer. Your children need prayer. But they also need your example. They need the loving discipline that really doesn't exist in the world. A world where everyone gets a trophy for everything. They need discipline. They need correction. They need to be told when they're wrong. There are wrong thoughts. There are wrong motives. There are wrong intentions. And they need to be taught this. If you leave a child to their own devices, they will walk away from the Lord. They won't walk to him. No man seeks after God unless he's drawn. The drawing starts coming as they see your life, as they see you living Christ before them. You know, if you leave your kids on autopilot, they'll crash. They'll crash. So how do we ensure that our, our children will grow up and live for Christ? Now, of course, 
Every child has, has their own will. They will choose. But I want to tell you that's exactly what the psalmist was talking about. Train up a child in the way that he should go. Proverbs. Rather. When they're old, they won't depart from him. But why? Because they've seen the example in you. Because they've seen that it's real. That you're not living a lie. You're not saying something on Sunday and living something else on, on Monday. So we have to walk the truth. If we ever hope that they'll walk in the truth at all. We have to practice. We have to live the truth. So how do we do that? John says it in verse 5. Ready? And now I beseech thee, lady, not as though I wrote a new commandment unto thee, but that which we had from the beginning, that we love one another. So how do we practice it? Listen, it's very simple. John says here we have to love one another. We have to love one another. And it's not a new command. It's, it's really, really cool. It's not some new, you know, strange, newfangled fad that's going on. Not at all. It's the very teaching of Jesus Christ from the very beginning. Ready? Love one another. So moms, this morning, listen, commit yourselves to creating an environment of love in your home. Do your best to ensure that every single person in your home is loved and they're valued and they're respected and they're heard. You don't always have to agree with it, but you do have to listen. You got to hear it. You got to know what you don't agree with. Don't just assume. Hear it. You know, create, if, if you will, a, a team spirit which encourages and supports the team, the family, the family that God has given you. Mom, see the example of loving sacrifice to your children so that they know what it looks like. So that they can look back and learn from that. And even if they walk away, they will look back and they will see it. And as you continue to pray, God continues to work in their life. We pray that they return back to it and walk it in. And maybe this morning you're not even sure like really what a loving home atmosphere looks like. Maybe you didn't come from one. And maybe it's not something from your experience that, that, that you would know about. And so John understands that, and he tells us in verse 6 what that is. He says, look, and this is love, that you walk after his commandments. This is the commandment, that as you have heard from the beginning, you should walk in it. In other words, listen, we can't separate the love for God and our love for each other, but also we can't separate our love for God and our obedience obedience to him. We can't say that we love him and not obey him. We can't. It's impossible. We have to learn and follow God's commands in our homes. Not just in church, not just in public, in our homes. And it's an interesting time. Where are we right now? We're in our homes. What are our kids learning? I don't know. It's distance learning. They're doing this. They're doing that. What are they learning? Forget all that. What are they learning from you? What are they learning from you? What are you teaching them? See, God's word is the absolute blueprint for a happy home, for a loving home, where the truth is taught. And we begin to see our kids walking in it. And they learn to walk in it because they see us walking in it. Mom, in order to be successful as a parent, leading your child to walk in Christ, first, you have to know the truth. Second, you must live the truth. Finally, this morning, you must protect the truth. Verses 7 to 11 tell us, look, knowing the truth and living the truth is not enough, especially today. We must protect the truth. The third responsibility as a Christian mom is to guard the truth in your home. Now, John knew that false teachers were around. They were walking and they were knocking on the doors. They were going home to home. And so he writes to this elect lady and he writes to her children in order to warn them about the danger that's coming, about the danger of letting go of the faith. It, only for a moment, in fact. It only takes a moment to let go. That's all that it takes. And John doesn't mince any words here. Look at verse 7. For many deceivers are entered into the world who confess not that Christ Jesus has come in the flesh. This is a deceiver and an antichrist. Now, the false teaching specifically, I mentioned a minute ago, 
had to deal with the nature of Jesus. The Bible teaches that Jesus Christ is fully man and fully God. And these false teachers were going around and they were denying Christ's human nature, that he wasn't fully man. And this is, of course, heresy. Because if Jesus wasn't truly human, then he couldn't die for humanity's sin. He couldn't. It's heresy. It's teaching a different gospel. It's teaching something other than the word of God. And John calls these teachers deceivers and antichrist. Wow. Those are pretty strong words. Now, today we don't really have traveling false teachers. They don't knock on your door, ring your ring doorbell, and want you to come to the door and say, okay, I'm here to tell you that Jesus never came in the flesh. We, we don't have that. So what kind of false messages do we have today? What kind of false teachers are we dealing with today? How about when you hear things like this? Truth is relative. Lie if it's convenient. Pleasure comes first. Win at all costs. Well, it doesn't matter what you do as long as no one else gets hurt. And the list goes on and on and on. And the world finds so many ways to deny Christ and his teachings. So many. Listen to the messages that society is feeding your children today. Listen, know what your kids are watching. Not just on TV, but on their cell phone and on their gaming system and everywhere. Know what they're watching. Listen to what they're listening to. Look, don't buy into all of this nonsense. Well, there's a generational gap. Nonsense. Know what they're listening to. Be involved. Be aware with what the schools are teaching your children. Understand it. Know it. And when it doesn't align with the word of God, say something about it. Confront the teachers about it. Show the truth and show your children you're not afraid to stand up for what's right. And you'll find them doing the exact same thing. Don't expect them to do it in school if you won't do it at home. See, your home is the first line of defense. It's that very first line. Who's going to protect your kids from falsehoods if you don't? Look at what John says in verse 8. Look to yourselves, that we lose not those things which we have wrought, but that we receive a full reward. Oh, this, is, this is heartbreaking. It's an exhortation, but it's, it's a heartbreaking exhortation to moms. Watch out that you don't lose all that stuff that you worked so hard for. Be very careful here. In other words, don't lose your children to the falsehood of this world. Don't do it. The enemy would love to destroy your children. The enemy would love to destroy them with, with, with the world's lies. Protect the truth. Don't let your children be deceived. Watch, pray, teach, correct, so that you may know the full reward, the full reward of a child who walks in God's truth. And what an amazing reward that is. Now again, we may not all be moms here today. I know that we're not. But at some point now, or at some point in our past, we've all been children. When you were young, some of you, weren't raised in the truth. I understand that. Some didn't have, have moms who knew and, and, and lived the truth. My friend, I want you to know today, Jesus Christ is calling you into a relationship with himself so that you can know, so that you can live the truth of Christ in your life. But you know, some of you were raised in the truth. Some of you were raised by moms of faith and your mom's taught you well not perfectly because moms are human beings just like everybody else and and they fail but they taught you well they taught you the truth let me ask you this are you walking in it are you walking in it you see it's not enough to just be be raised in the truth it's not enough to be raised with the right teaching it's not enough there are families that have raised children and they raise them up all with the right teaching. And one of that family may be following Christ or two or none. It's not just the right teaching. It's not just that. That is extremely important. It's the continuing of it. Listen, if you don't continue in Christ's teaching, 
You don't have God. It's just you're showing your cards. It was a show. It was a sham. It was convenience for a time. Friends, a walk with Jesus Christ is not convenient. It is the most fruitful walk that you'll ever have in all of your existence. Certainly not convenient. So John couldn't put it any stronger or plainer than he does here. Look, you're living a lie. If you're not continuing to walk in Christ, you're living a lie. And you're lying to yourself and you're lying to God. God sees right through it. And you, if you think about it, you know in your heart of hearts that you're lying to yourself. If you've been running from God, if you've been running away from him all your life, let me encourage you this morning. Listen to, to, to these words. Please come back today. Come back. It would be the absolute greatest Mother's Day present that you could give, that you could ever possibly give to your mom. Don't let your mom lose what she's worked so hard for. If you had a mom who was faithful in teaching you, about Christ. Remember, as Christian parents, there is no greater joy that we have than to see our children walking in Christ. So friends, listen. John ends his letter by saying that he has a lot more that he'd like to say, but he'd rather do it in person. Isn't that amazing? It's kind of like today. That there's probably a whole lot more that possibly could be said. There's a whole lot more that should be said. And and John longed to be in person with this elect lady and her children. Friends, I long to be together with you, to be um, in the same place, to sharing together. But he sends greetings, and today, that's exactly what's sent to you. Greetings from God himself, and he sends greetings to the elect lady, the children of, of the elect sister. With these powerful, powerful applications for moms, these powerful applications for every single one of us, moms, know the truth. Come to know Christ as your Savior. Come to know the Spirit of truth who lives within every single believer. Come to know God's grace, His mercy, and His peace. Moms, live the truth. Look, nurture that loving environment in your home. Teach your children God's word. Live God's word yourself before them to see. And finally, mothers, protect the truth. Protect, protect those kids from ungodly influences. Teach your children to discern truth over error. What it's like, have those debates with them. Have those conversations with them. And they'll happen in the strangest places. They'll happen while you're cooking dinner or while you're riding in the car or while you're trying to take a bath and your kids don't let you because it just works that way. You'll have those conversations then. Make that time. Have those conversations. Make your home a sanctuary for truth. Don't allow anything in your home that's going to undercut the message of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I'm not going to give you a whole list of legalistic things here. I'm going to tell you, don't let things in your house that's going to undercut the message of Jesus Christ and the truth of him in your home. You have a brain. You have the Holy Spirit if you're in Christ. Figure it out. Follow Christ. Watch out that you don't lose what you've worked so hard for. That you may know that true and amazing and wonderful joy of seeing your children walk in the truth. Maybe you're listening today and you're a mom and you say, well, look, this message, it's too late for me. My, my children, they're, they're, they're grown. And I don't really have this kind of influence over them anymore. Yes, it's true that influence is stronger when our children are younger. But you can still make a difference by following these exact same steps. Know the truth. Know Jesus Christ. Draw close to him. Practice the truth. Be that good example to your grown children of what a believer looks like and guard the truth. Listen, pray for your children. Pray for that hedge of protection around them and their homes. Pray that they will follow the, the truth and that they will follow it with all of their heart. They would follow the Lord Jesus Christ. This morning, I pray that you may be blessed and that Jesus Christ may be exalted and that you would understand and implement these simple responsibilities, the responsibilities of a faithful mom. 
Moms, once again, happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day. Thank you for choosing life. Thank you for making a lot of hard decisions, for doing without all those things. It's not easy. I have a great mom and I have a, a wife who is a great mom. And I see what goes into it. And I thank you for not giving up. May you be blessed today. May you be a blessing. Let's close with prayer to you. Heavenly Father, I thank you today for all of the moms, God. And I, I just thank you, Lord. We're here today, and, and all of us are here. All of us had one. <laughs> so we thank you, Lord, for that. And whether we were raised in the truth or not, we thank you that your truth is for all. And so today, if there are any within the sound of my voice that have not come to you through Jesus Christ, Father, that they would today and that they would be saved. And Father, I pray that you would bless our moms. Lord, I pray that all of the moms would be able to see and to experience that joy of watching their children walk in the truth of Jesus Christ. Lord, in this wicked generation, we need nothing more than that. And so God, help us. We thank you, we love you, and we pray in Jesus' name, amen. Moms, happy Mother's Day. May you be blessed by God.